Uh, IP, intellectual property, I think is the third area. Um, look, close to half of patents filed in the US are by non-residents. Yeah? This is 07 numbers. What does that mean? It, it really speaks to globalization. It really means that, that in the most powerful and innovative economy in the world, half of inventions today are being created by non-Americans or non-American companies. Think about that. I, you know, I think this, this, this speaks to the, the, the way talent flows and companies are flowing across, across this globe. Um, so take patent filings as an example. Uh, you know, a lot of countries on a per capita basis have very impressive rates. Eh? Uh, Japan, Korea, the US. Malaysia pales in comparison. Yeah? We do four patent filings per, uh, per million people compared to nearly 3,000 for Japan. I think these have implications. A, lo a lot of these fact-based, when we come down to the questions of so what we do, in fact, we should look back at all these factors. Next page, please. Um, look, globalization is making the world a smaller, more in interdependent place. What do I mean by that? Take the following three or four other factors. Talent. Case in point, Singapore. Right? Um, the growth of PRs, permanent residents, is eight times that of citizens in the last 20 years. Today, there are about half a million Singapore PRs versus 3.2 million citizens. That's one in six. So if you take Singapore as an example, I think uh, it's clear, it is clear. And, and they're not Malaysians, they're, they're not, I mean, not all of them are Malaysians. Uh, but, but I think Singapore is an example of, of clearly where talent flows have become so important that somehow citizenship has become far less important than actually tapping on the talents of, of people. Okay. Malaysia, well, what's our story? Last year, as you know, about 300,000 people uh, migrated. That's not necessary to say that they gave up citizenship. What it means that 300,000 Malaysians registered somewhere around the world to say that they are now working somewhere around the world, right? During this period, about 4,000 people decided to give up their Malaysian passports, right? These are the honest ones. There are plenty of people that actually hold other citizenships, but actually don't bother renouncing the, the Malaysian citizenship. But these are the honest ones, right? 308,000 people came to the embassies and said, okay, now I'm American, German, Australian, whatever, and here's my passport. Um, about half of Malaysians working abroad are professionals. Yeah. So about half of Malaysians abroad are professionals. Uh, I think the other half are, are probably in this room. So uh, um, I, I see a few familiar faces, those who, who used to uh, have a great time overseas are now back here, which is, which is a good thing, I think. It shows that all is not lost, yeah? <clears throat> the other thing about talent, graduate courses in the U.S., 50% of enrollment in graduate courses are non-U.S. nationals. Yeah? Again, that, that, I think that, uh, that speaks to the internationalization of, of, um, of knowledge and knowledge creation. Take communications. Look, first mobile phone was only 35 years ago, uh, created by Motorola. Today, there are 4.1 billion users. Mobile penetration rates are above 100% in Hong Kong, Estonia. I'm a bit surprised at Malaysia at 100%. I thought everyone here carries two mobile phones, so we should be closer to 200%. Uh, but I think communications technology has clearly made the world a smaller place. And in a way, it has facilitated people being more comfortable being apart. Uh, distance is no longer a barrier. So what that really means is that I think we are not adverse to being uh, physically far away because one is still connected very much with one's roots and you know, parent organizations or companies. The environment, uh, I think, if you look at the 
explosion of uh, carbon credit transactions be between 07 and 08, right? 63 billion to 126 billion today in a short space of two to three years. I mean, five years ago, no one really bothered with carbon credits. Today, it is such a significant part of developing versus developed economies, that, that interaction. Um, um, it's something not to be ignored. And what it means is that there is pervasive concerns about climate change as, as a global population. Um, about 100 over leaders are going to be in Copenhagen later part of this week. I can tell you a fair number of them would rather not be in Copenhagen. But the reason why they're there is because their local, their domestic populations will not accept their leadership not being there. So, I mean, that, that is the extent of pressure on leadership today for communities, and, and, and they're responding. Yeah. Income distribution, I think, is, is the other thing about globalization. Uh, we, we, Malaysia doesn't do too badly. I mean, uh, uh, you know, for 9%, 100% means completely unequal uh, income distribution. Uh, the closer you get to 0%, the more you have a, an equal distribution of income across population. We're not, we're, we're, we're not great, but uh, you know, we have to ask ourselves, you know, as, as a society, which way are we moving? I think this, this goes to a political philosophy in terms of where we want to be. Most European countries are, are around the 20 to 30% mark. Um, the U.S. has been consistently above 40. In fact, it peaked at 47, 2006, 47 uh, percent. Signaling, I think, there is greater inequality, if you like, in 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 a great country like America compared to you know, a place like Scandinavia. So, in short, I think these are these are some of the questions. I think uh, some of the issues around globalization which matter for us. Um, as, 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 as a country. I want to go to very quickly three other slides just to, just to share with you why I think Tunku Razali made such an important point. We are really trailing behind. You know, Malaysia was once a heavyweight to global investors. Today, we are struggling to remain on their radar screens. If you look on the left pie chart, 1996, our stock market is 300 billion. Today we are 190 billion. It's the size of our total market cap on Bursa. Um, this is in spite of, of, of Asia X Japan growing from 1.6 to 5.9 trillion. Uh, we really have been marginalized from second to, to ninth. And it's a function of both the explosion of, of the Chinese capital markets, the Indian capital markets, but I think also it is a function of how less attractive we have been, how whether our corporates are actually uh, attractive enough to a global investor pool, which is increasingly sophisticated and frankly has more choices today than ever before. I just want to make that, that, that point. Next page. I think in income per capita terms, Malaysia has fallen behind our peers in the last decade. This is a very complex chart, but uh, on the left, you'll see between 1991 and 1995, that middle group along with Malaysia, Argentina, Chile, Mauritius, Mexico, Russia, Turkey, these were the countries that became upper middle income around the same time as us in the early 90s yeah they moved we moved from low income to upper middle income around the same time uh, that's the middle band 